Age Agency for Food, Environmental, Occupational Health Safety, ANSES in Nancy, France. In, and she is heading the laboratory for rabies and wildlife. And so actually we found out yesterday, Florence, uh, she has multiple labels. She is a WHO collaborating center on rabies. She is an OIE collaborating center or reference lab for rabies and a European one on top and otherwise a long-term engaged uh, person in global rabies activities. Thank, thank you, you, Florence. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Knopf, and uh, thank you for the organizer, organizers to, 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 for this invitation. I am very pleased to, to be there, and I will present you some uh, information on the rabies diagnostic and uh, uh, the uh, epidemiological data generated by, uh, by this uh, uh, diagnostic uh, information. First of all, uh, uh, all the tests for rabies diagnostics are very well described in the uh, different books that you have on this slide. The first um, guideline for uh, rabies diagnostic was uh, in the book of uh, WHO in uh, um, 1976. Uh, this guideline book has been updated recently uh, in a new one, dated 2015 by uh, Chuck Ruprecht and uh, Dr. Nagarayan. And uh, this book is uh, still uh, updated now and taken in charge by uh, WHO. So a new book will be published uh, in, um, I don't know when, <laughs> uh, in a few uh, months. Uh, the OIE manual also uh, has a really big chapter uh, very well documented. And uh, a new version of the OIE rabies chapter will be uh, published uh, uh, in a in few months. So some details about the tests which are currently in use in the laboratories. So the first test, you all know that this test it is a gold standard, the fluorescent antibody test, which detects rabies antigen on fresh, frozen, or fixed material. The staining of the tissue um, is done with a fluorescent isothiocyanate conjugate. So laboratories need to be equipped with a microscope uh, with UV. And uh, this test, as you can see, is uh, highly sensitive and uh, highly specific. Uh, it is still the gold standard. Uh, another test uh, which is uh, currently used and uh, which is the most commonly used for rabies uh, diagnosis confirmation is the uh, rabies tissue culture infection test, RTCIT, which uh, is also very sensitive, very specific, uh, especially uh, in case of uh, negative or uncertain results, the OIE strongly recommend to use it. And uh, this test uh, is also used for uh, lysavirus isolation. Molecular biology tools are more and more used, and uh, uh, we have in my lab the information uh, about all European Union laboratories. I can tell you this test is now more used in Europe than the RTCIT. So the OIE will uh, soon uh, include in the manual chapter uh, this test as uh, confirmatory tools uh, just after uh, the FAT. <laughs> So this, uh, this, te this technique will become a reference technique. So as you know, uh, the detection of RNA is uh, uh, possible even in degraded samples. So it is very convenient technique. And uh, also this test uh, is very useful for human diagnosis, uh, intravitam diagnosis in saliva samples or skin biopsies. Uh, the technique uh, use uh, RT-PCR or quantitative uh, um, um, PCR, detecting uh, very low quantities of DNA. And uh, as you know, these uh, techniques are highly sensitive, highly specific. The, the problem of this technique, um, uh, because there is uh, some problems, you need a high technology laboratory equipment. You have a high risk of uh, cross-contamination between uh, uh, different samples, different um, rabies virus species uh, generating uh, false positive uh, results. So you need a very, very stringent quality assurance scheme. Uh, recent tests have been developed and uh, OIE is uh, um, currently uh, reviewing, has been currently reviewing this test 
uh, the DRIT test, which has been developed by the CDC in the years 2000. This test detects also viral antigens, so it is uh, uh, similar to FAT, except the fact that the conjugate is a streptavidin biotin peroxidase uh, conjugate, <laughs> Uh, which use monoclonal or poly polyclonal antibodies. Uh, so you don't need <coughs> a, a microscope equipped with, with a fluorescence, and uh, it can be a big advantage uh, for a lot of countries. This test is uh, in a routine use in North American countries uh, for support of uh, oral vaccination um, in wildlife uh, efficacy programs. Uh, it requires a very basic laboratory equipment uh, reagents and training are absolutely necessary for its application because uh, there is a lot of steps, so it's not so easy test. And uh, um, we advise to use this test in, uh, in developing countries where uh, the burden of rabies is important and where uh, the microscope um, uh, management is not always uh, easy. A test which is uh, currently in, uh, in use and recognized by the OIE manual is the lateral, lateral flow assays. It is a test uh, which has been, have been very recently developed for rabies. Uh, the well-known tests are uh, the pregn pregnancy test uh, in use uh, in a lot of countries since the uh, 60s. And uh, recently it has been uh, developed for rabies use. Uh, it detects uh, also rabies virus antigen, and uh, uh, the reading is very, very rapid. It is a very rapid test, only uh, using the uh, eye to, to read, uh, as you see on the slide, uh, uh, a bound um, uh, when you have a positive, uh, a positive case. Uh, but there is a problem with this uh, promising tool. Um, it seems easy, but um, you have to be very careful when you want to, to use such tests because a lot of tests uh, are available on the market at the, at the present time. So uh, we advise to uh, standardize um, this test in your labs before you use them. And uh, we also uh, advise uh, to um, uh, compare the results you have with such tests with the results uh, obtained with the FAT. Uh, test. But it can be a very, very useful test. So as soon as we have uh, tested the samples for rabies diagnosis, um, it is important, very important, to have a database to uh, put all the data. Uh, you can have a database very simple with an Excel file or sophisticated one, uh, and uh, the database should contain some information uh, related to the animal tested species, Asian sex, geographical location, if possible, date of sampling, the history, uh, which is very important, uh, the uh, human contamination, for example, the bite, uh, the biological quality of sample is also very important, and also um, the sample procedure. Uh, the results of the diagnostic technique should be, of course, reported in the database, and uh, in fact, we have a very simple result for rabies you know, diagnostic. It is positive or negative. Or if you use uh, uh, molecular biology tools, you can, ha you can have positive or negative, but you can have also uh, uh, the partial uh, or full genome sequencing. Um, I, uh, I put the N gen, but you, have, you can have the G gen. Uh, and you can have also all the full genome uh, sequencing if you use the NGS technology. And uh, as soon as you have this information in your database, um, you have a network. I like, I like to show this, uh, this slide. So the national database is here, and uh, you see that the network is, is uh, around, the database is around uh, the National Reference Lab. So it is a lab uh, network, laboratory-based network with uh, uh, samples uh, arriving to the laboratory, developing the database, and exchanging the data with the national competent authorities for animal health, but also for uh, agriculture. It is very important to, to have a base shared for animal and for human samples. 
Some examples here, but very, very few examples, because there is a lot of database that you can find on the Internet site. So um, in Europe, we use uh, the, uh, a DNS. I, I like this database because every day you have new information. Uh, it is uh, daily documented. And you have also the Webis Bulletin in Europe, um, uh, some databases which are very interesting in, in uh, South America. And uh, here I put some example, but you have uh, many, many databases. And uh, of course, uh, uh, ones of the OIE and the uh, WHO. The key points when you have uh, the surveillance data uh, is to have the following uh, points which, which uh, have to be um, uh, documented. So rabies should be a notifiable disease with an adequate and effective surveillance system, both for human and uh, animal. Uh, a national reference laboratory and possibly uh, regional laboratories using reference tests for rabies diagnosis, collaboration between national and regional uh, labs in the field, a quality assurance scheme, not only uh, uh, a paper with the 17025, but uh, the most important is to have a, a traceability of the sampling and of the analysis in the lab. Uh, the al algorithm to decide uh, wh uh, when the, the, um, the result is positive, when it is negative. Uh, it can be interesting for uh, policy makers. Um, also, uh, the reporting in the database, a timely reporting. <coughs> And uh, also, uh, we, we think it is uh, important to, um, to be involved in uh, proficiency testing uh, very regularly uh, to, uh, to be able uh, to, uh, to prove that your results are reliable. So um, as soon as you have a uh, uh, visit base, uh, you will have uh, um, a personnel in charge and this point is for me very, very important. Um, uh, we clearly saw this morning with your presentation a lot of epidemiological data were presented. And uh, the way of presenting the data uh, is highly important to, to be sure that the um, stakeholders will uh, decide a new strategy or will change the strategy or will um, adopt a strategy. So now I will present you very rapidly some uh, objectives of uh, epidemiological data analysis. So the first, uh, the most important is the rabies surveillance, estimation of the disease burden. So you have, um, uh, for example, a way of presenting the data. Here it is a table that we have received recently from Greece with uh, domestic animals, wildlife, and you have uh, the different regions. So it is uh, data for the rabies bulletin Europe. <laughs> you can uh, have um, uh, data showing the spatio-temporal patterns of uh, uh, the disease, the epidemiological situation at a certain time and in a certain area. With different uh, maps, for example, here, you have a maps from uh, uh, you, the US and Puerto Rico, and you have clearly, uh, you see, Immediately, that uh, raccoon uh, distribution is clearly in the east part of the U.S., uh, while dogs and cats are everywhere and also uh, in the east part of the country. So having so, uh, such a mapping can be uh, very important to show uh, the interest of um, uh, uh, the um, conduction of oral vaccination for raccoons. For example, here you have uh, uh, passive surveillance data and location of rabies cases in Estonia uh, from uh, 2006 to 2010. And uh, we, there is a lot of information on uh, such maps of the uh, pressure of the passive surveillance, the location of the positive cases, which is not linked to the pressure of the surveillance. And as said previously, it is um, um, interesting to to put the negative cases also on such maps to, to show that the pressure of the surveillance is uh, uh, homogeneous in time and in space. So now, 
Yes, I push here. So you have also um, data with epidemic curves and the disease trend uh, uh, monitoring. So for example, I took uh, uh, maps from France so showing uh, the dramatic decrease of, uh, of rabies in, in time, on time, uh, and following uh, the application of uh, oral vaccination. So uh, epidemiological data are also important for evaluating effectiveness of control measures. I, I like also to show this, uh, this, um, this map, this, uh, yes, this histogram from uh, Dr. Francois-Xavier Meslin, showing clearly that the number of human cases uh, decrease as soon as we <coughs> increase the vaccination of uh, uh, um, uh, dogs. So uh, combining data of human and, uh, and animal uh, cases are very, uh, also very important. Um, establishment or adaptation of the strategy based on the surveillance data analysis. I know a lot of countries in Europe that change the strategy. Uh, France, for example, based on uh, the maps, the data uh, obtained on, uh, uh, with epidemiological data of uh, rabies diagnosis. Um, for example, here you have uh, um, uh, a graph showing that the elimination of dogs, uh, here it is the elimination of dogs, was not efficient to, uh, to, um, uh, to decrease the number of rabies cases. And as soon as a new strategy was put, oops, là, oh, ça va être très compliqué, uh, was, was put in place, um, was developed, um, uh, the, uh, the, the vaccination was more efficient than the elimination of dogs. Uh, um, epidemiological data analysis is very important also for uh, ensuring management of cases and outbreaks, particularly in uh, uh, rabies-free countries. And now uh, there is a lot of rabies-free countries doing uh, risk assessment uh, to identify the risks of uh, 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 patterns um, and the disease introduction um, spread also of the virus. And uh, uh, in this risk assessment, uh, we use the data of uh, rabies diagnostic. So that we have a lot of papers uh, showing, showing the interest of such, uh, such uh, analysis. And uh, for example, um, here, uh, uh, here you have, for example, for, for Morocco, the two slides are from Morocco, it's clearly demonstrated that the uh, risk of introducing rabies in the EU is increased during the July-August period. And uh, here I like this, uh, this graph. Um, uh, for example, the, the risk for EU introduction of a rabbit dog is increased uh, here uh, by EU tourists, and not Moroccan tourists, EU tourists uh, bringing uh, in the ferry or in, in the cars uh, uh, rabid uh, uh, dogs, small dogs uh, from Morocco that are incubating rabies and that uh, who uh, uh, develop the disease in Europe. And uh, also, I like I like this map. I like also this map. Um, um, establishing the risk areas of uh, uh, bovine cases. So it is a very, very detailed map. Okay. So molecular biology tools also. Uh, so you know that determination of the Lysavirus species, um, uh, evolution of the rabies virus, very beautiful uh, map showing uh, evolution of the virus in the time as was explained yesterday by uh, uh, Dan Horton. So we are able with diagnostic data, very simple diagnostic data, to generate a lot of epidemiological uh, data. And uh, uh, I think this one also is very important. Um, classifying the uh, species of virus into different phylogroups allows also to anticipate uh, the efficacy of the current vaccines. So it is also another point of the data generated by the rabies diagnostic, which are uh, highly important. So in conclusion, I would say that rabies diagnosis 
should be based on laboratory investigation only and not on clinical diagnostic on uh, dead animals suspect for rabies. Uh, the diagnostic data are surveillance data, which are epidemiological data if they are analyzed and uh, they are essential component for short and long term analysis of rabies situation, for deciding the strategy of control, for evaluating the, the control measures, and for understanding the spatial temporal dynamics of virus spread. So as I try to show you, there is, there is different ways of presenting the data depending on analysis objectives. So we think it is highly important to have at least one uh, person dedicated to the regular analysis of surveillance data and uh, uh, associating experts of the laboratory um, in this work of uh, analysis. And uh, all data should be included in the analysis, including uh, those from human cases, animal cases, taking into consideration positive and negative cases. And these epidemiological data are uh, the basis that should be used by the decision makers. So, and uh, this data should be uh, largely shared with a lot of uh, stakeholders within the, within the, con the country. I would like to show you this, uh, this new, uh, very new, I received a link two weeks ago, uh, this guideline, the name is Guideline for Presentation of Surveillance Data. It is uh, done by uh, experts, epide epidemiological experts, and published on the website of the ECDC. So I have finished. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Florence. Thank you very much for, uh, despite technical challenges,